I have a great charm square project for you today. Charm squares are five inch squares of fabric that are pre-cut for you and ready to sew. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a patchwork pillow using five inch squares. Although this project has tiny squares, we're gonna use a simple strip method to piece it together. You'll need one charm pack for this project. I'm using this one called Autumn by Lori Holt. It has 42 squares and I love how it shows all of them on the back. You also need 5 8 yard of a lining fabric that will also be the backing for our pillow. And craft interfacing, this is an extra firm. 5 8 yard quilt batting, a rotary cutter, spray based, and other sewing supplies like pins and an iron. Start by opening up your charm pack. I love opening these up, it's so satisfying to find all these different fabrics. Now we're gonna pull out nine different prints from this pack. We'll be sewing these together in groupings of nine, so I'm just trying to get a variation of colors for my first strip. The first step is to cut each of these squares in half. So we're gonna use an acrylic ruler and a rotary cutter. And since these are five inch squares, we're gonna cut them in half at two and a half inches. After you're finished cutting all of those in half, grab one of each color from your stack. Set one of your stacks aside for later and then line these halves up in an order that you like. Now we're going to sew these together along the long edge of the rectangles with a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Just keep adding to your strip until you've sewn all of these rectangles together. When your strip is done, we're gonna bring it to our ironing board and press all the seams in one direction. This will help us keep the fabric flat while we cut it in half. Now bring your fabric over to your cutting mat. We're gonna cut this exactly in half. So a measure again at two and a half inches. A long acrylic ruler will help you do this all in one go. And now you have two strips. Repeat the whole process until you have 10 strips. Now we're gonna mix up our strips. We actually only need nine of these strips so you can get rid of one of them. I put them in piles with their identical strip matching. So what I did is I put them in order from one to five and then took strip number four, turned it over and put it next to five and repeated that until I got all the way back down to one. You can do this however you want though. The next step is to turn over all of these strips. I like to keep them in order just by carefully turning them over in place. So we need to press the seam allowances in opposite directions. That way we can lock our seams and get a crisper finish. So pick up each strip individually and press down, up, down, up, down, up, and so on. Now grab your first two strips, matching them at that seam where they meet. And we're gonna push those seam allowances together because of the way we have pressed our seam allowances. They'll match right up and they will butt up against each other. This is also referred to as interlocking seams. This way those intersections will be really crisp. So send those through your machine with a one quarter inch seam allowance. You don't necessarily have to pin if you don't want to. You can just make sure to lock each seam before you go over it with your needle. So I'm sewing this slowly and every time I get to one of those intersections, I'm just making sure that the seam allowances are going in the direction I want and that they're butted up against each other. When your two strips are sewn together, you can bring it up and see how interlocking those seams makes those intersections really nice. So then go ahead and put this right back where it was and then grab the next one. I like to put it back down, face down to keep it in order. Continue this process until you have sewn the entire pillow top together. Now grab a piece of interfacing bigger than your pillow top and with a sticky side facing the back of the pillow cover, we're gonna press these together really well to fuse that interfacing onto the back. This interfacing will add so much crispness to your pillow, you'll be glad you did it. Once that is done, just trim around the edges to get rid of any excess interfacing. The next step is to back this with a layer of needle felted quilt batting. You can measure this out if you want, but I prefer just to put my pillow top on the, on the batting and cut around, leaving just a little bit extra on the sides. We're gonna do the same thing with the lining fabric that will act as our backing as we quilt this pillow top. 
Now we're going to use spray base to keep these layers together. This is a sprayable adhesive that's really easy to use. So just lift up your first layer, spray it on the batting, and press firmly down, keeping all those, all the fabric straight and lined up. Now repeat the same process with the backing or lining fabric, spraying on that fabric to adhere the batting to it. Once those layers are stuck together, we're going to let it dry. Once it has had time to dry, bring it to your sewing machine and we are going to quilt on the top of this. So you can choose any pattern you want to, to quilt those layers together. What I like to do is sew one quarter inch on either side of every seam. So it is a lot of lines, but it looks really good when you're done. So then bring it back and go down that seam on the other side a quarter inch from the middle of the seam. Once all your vertical lines are done, turn the pillow top and do the horizontal lines the same way. When your quilting is finished, trim this down to 18 by 18 inches. When you're quilting, the fabric will sometimes shrink in at parts, so you might end up with a little bit of batting on the sides. That's okay though, because we are going to use a larger seam allowance around those edges and that batting will be hidden. So just make sure your pillow top is all squared up. Now we're ready to work on the back. Cut two layers of batting 18 by 10 and a half and two lining pieces 18 by 21 inches. We're gonna start by folding the back piece in half, matching those short 18 inch edges and folding it to create a crease in the middle. Then open that up and line up your batting with the crease and the edge of the fabric. Fold the other edge of the fabric over the top to make a sandwich. Pin all the edges together along the fold and then sew that in place with a one quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat for the other side of the back. Now we're gonna assemble the pillow cover. So grab your main pillow top put it face up and then put one of the backs on one side and one on the other. These are gonna overlap a few inches in the middle, but make sure you line up the corners. Pin all the outside edges of the pillow together and then sew around with a one half inch seam allowance. You don't need to leave an opening since we can use the middle to turn. I recommend back stitching along the overlap because that is kind of a vulnerable part when we're opening our pillowcase. Now trim those corners and clip the seam allowance a little bit to reduce the bulk. Now turn your pillowcase right side out. Make sure to poke those corners out using a chopstick or another tool. And then we're gonna bring this to our ironing board and press it really well. The last step is to grab an 18 by 18 inch pillow form and stuff it inside your pillow cover. And now it's ready to be used. Click above for more Charm Square projects.